Hello, Mr. Kaczynski here, working on IXL Section F in 8th grade math, estimating positive square roots. All right, so uh, I think the first thing we need to do is get, you know, a list of square roots kind of down pat here um, that we can use and know forever. Of course, 1 squared is 1. That, that one we don't concentrate on too much. Uh, 4 is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. 16. These are these are numbers that if we memorize them, it's going to help us a lot in math. 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, We'll do five more. How about uh, 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. Most of the multiplication tables you probably memorized in elementary school went up to 12 by 12. 13 squared, let's get that. 14 squared is 196. 15 squared is 225. If, if you can memorize those, that'll get you a darn good start. All right, so here we go. Uh, complete the following statement using the integers that are closest to the number in the middle. And we're supposed to choose numbers that are like consecutive integers as well. I think that's in the directions. So I know that um, 7 squared is 49, and that's really close to 47. Okay, so if I go one below that, one integer below that to six, six squared is 36. All right, so um, use the integers that this is between. So square root of 47 is right smack dab between six and seven. Well, it's not like it's in the middle, but it's a little closer to seven, but it's between six and seven. So another one like that. Uh, as the numbers get bigger, maybe they get a little bit tougher. Um, maybe you start with 10 squared is 100, and 11 squared is 121. That's the one I want. That's less. All right, so 11 squared is 121. All right, if I go up from there to 12 squared, that's 144, which is bigger than 133, okay? So a little bit less than 133 would be 11 squared, and a little bit bigger than 133 would be 12 squared. So between 11 and 12. And that's the concept that we're using throughout here. So what about this one? Uh, I know 2 squared is 4, and I know that 3 squared is 9. Okay, so where does 7 fall in that? Okay, where does 7 fall in that? I guess it's three away from that, and it's two away from that. So it, it's not perfectly a proportional idea, but I mean, we definitely know it's somewhere between two and three, right? It's between two and three, so we can get this and get rid of this. It's either 2.6 or 2.2. I think it's gonna be closer to three than it is to two, so that's why I'm choosing 2.6, and that's correct too. All right, the point is to be able to do this without calculators. This one might be a little bit more clear, actually. Um, I know that 8 squared is 64. That's pretty close to 68. 9 squared is 81. And that's, so, I mean, right there, we can eliminate them, some things. We know it's between 8 and 9. It's either 8.9 or 9, or 8.2. Is, is our answer, is square root of 68 closer to Eight or is it closer to nine? Well, is 68 closer to 64 or 81? That's basically what we need to ask. So uh, I think it's closer to 64. So that's why I think it's closer to eight than it is to nine. A couple more here. Um, square root of 42 between what two numbers? And actually, this is probably easier than the, the last ones, but they're kind of all intermixed. Um, so again, this is just going back to basics here. Uh, I know that 6 squared is pretty close to it. That's 36. And 7 squared is 
49, and 42 is right there between 36 and 39, so the square root of 42 should be somewhere between 6 and 7. Like I said, as the numbers get bigger, they're a little bit tougher. But if you memorize these, 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. And 154 is between 144 and 169, so between 12 and 13. And there we go. So we're working on estimating positive square roots. We want to stay away from the calculator, um, but you know sometimes we might reach for that when we're a little bit unsure. But give it a try. I'm sure you'll do great.